ATS, developers and operators of geophysical software, is proud to introduce our proprietary line of electroseismic geophysical technologies. Electroseismic geophysical methods combine the benefits of both standard seismic and electrical geophysical methods to produce geophysical data sets that include both geological and geohydrological information. To accomplish this, electroseismic survey equipment is deployed to an investigation site. This equipment consists of a single mobile seismic source. This source can take the form of any seismic impulse generating mechanism, including a low energy hammer and plate, or a medium energy drop weight, or a high power explosive source such as a buffalo gun. Once the equipment arrives at a target site, the seismic source is placed over the field point location to be surveyed. An operational safety area is then demarcated around the seismic source. Two stainless steel pins are then inserted into the ground to create a grounded dipole antenna. These two pins are placed two meters apart and inserted 30 centimeters into the ground. A signal recording cable is connected to the pins of the grounded dipole antenna. This signal cable is then connected to a recording device which consists of a smartphone, on which the ATS GeoSuite application is running. The ATS GeoSuite application is used to locate predefined points on a survey site, as well as sample, analyze and store electroseismic data. Once all the electroseismic equipment is in place, a recording is initiated using the GeoSuite application. The seismic source equipment, which ordinarily consists of a 300 kilogram weight attached to a hydraulic lift system that drops the weight from a height of 5 meters, is used to inject a seismic impulse wave into the ground. This process of striking the ground is repeated 10 to 20 times on one location, in a process known as data stacking. Data stacking improves the signal-to-noise ratio of recorded electroseismic data which in turn produces higher quality results. The seismic impulse wave travels through the underlying rock strata, spreading out from the seismic source point. The seismic wave continues to travel through the rock strata until it passes through a fluid saturated porous media. This porous media consists of grains of minerals with pore spaces in between them. These pore spaces are filled with fluids that contain free moving ions. Since these minerals are inherently charged due to their molecular construction, some of the free moving ions within the pore space fluids are naturally attracted to the mineral surfaces. This process is called equilibrium of charge. The process results in a thin layer of ions that coat the surface of the mineral grains. When a seismic wave passes through the fluid saturated porous media, this thin layer of ions around the grain of rock is disrupted and some of the ions are pulled away from the grain surface. When this happens, a charge separation occurs and equilibrium is broken. The process of charge separation produces streaming currents within the pore space fluids resulting in the generation of electromagnetic fields. These electromagnetic fields expand outward from the charge separation source at the speed of light, in the toroidal shape of a dipole electric field, until they reach the surface. The electric fields are picked up at the surface by the grounded dipole antenna and are transformed into a set of time-varying potential differences. These time-varying potential differences are transmitted through the signal cable to the GeoSuite application, which records the signals and stores them for later processing. As the electroseismic geophysical technique is a point-based system that only samples information directly under the seismic source. A two-dimensional image of electroseismic data is constructed by collecting electroseismic data at a number of discrete points in a profile line. This is done by relocating the electroseismic equipment to these discrete points and repeating the data collection process.
Once a number of survey point data sets are collected, in a profile section, a two-dimensional image can be created. Here we can see two-dimensional hydraulic permeability data, for the surveyed profile line. If a number of profile lines are surveyed in parallel, a three-dimensional grid can be created which can be used to produce a three-dimensional image of the underlying site geology and hydrogeology. Here we can see the underlying electro-seismic permeability data, shown as a three-dimensional isometric surface data set. Electro-seismic data can also be used to find and define subsurface geological structural information, such as the shape and position of fault lines, or intrusive structures. An example of this is shown. Geologists and geophysicists can use this information to delineate geological structures, to build or improve geological models for an investigation site. Electro-seismic data can also be used to delineate fracture networks and secondary permeability fluid flow systems under an investigation site. Electro-seismic interface tomography data allows geologists to define the geological lithology of an investigation site by delineating geological formation interfaces at depth. This produces geological maps similar to standard seismic methods. Electro-seismic data can also be used to define the subsurface fluid resource. In this example, the investigation site groundwater resource potential is defined. However, electro-seismic data has been effectively used to define hydrocarbon reservoirs, geothermal resources, and natural and unconventional gas reservoirs. Electro-seismic data has also found application in environmental studies. Here we can see freshwater aquifers, visualized in relation to saline intrusion, within a complex fractured permeability network. Other applications include DNAPL and NNAPL contamination studies, and wasteful contamination investigations. ATS hopes you found this introduction to electroseismics helpful and informative. We invite you to browse our website at www.aquatronic.net for further information. Or contact us directly at info at aquatronic.net.